I'm Natalie and I'd like to find out if CBDL is going to work for me. I've had anxiety for some time, but I'm a mum to a three-year-old little boy now, so it's something I'd like to see the back of. There's a cannabis extract that's now so popular that you can buy it in just about everything, from oils and vape liquids to shampoo and makeup to drinks and even chocolate. It's classed as a supplement and is being sold in shops and online. It's called CBD and at high doses, a regulated type is being used in medical studies and it's getting some positive results. It's everywhere, but there's just so much conflicting advice as well and there's so much to choose from. I bought it uh, two months ago. I haven't taken any yet. I'm not 100% sure what I've bought. I'm not sure how it'll interact with anything else I'm on. I mean, I've since been diagnosed with other things. I've tried a number of prescription drugs, um, mainly antidepressants. Nothing are pulling me through. So you get to a point where you'll just try anything, especially when it's been advertised as something more natural. I've looked at a couple of sellers' websites. I've tried by milligrams, but also percentage strength. I'm just not really sure what all the different colours mean. I guess the fundamental questions that I want to know over the next couple of days is, will it work for me? Will it work for others? How will it work? What dosage should I be taking? Should others be taking? Hi, I'm Natalie. Thanks for showing Hello, us around. Good. Hi. That's all right, no problem. Shall we go and have a look at a crop that I planted 10 days ago? Yeah, let's go, yeah. I'm just curious to find out what you grow here and how it works from your side. Well, we grow hemp and flax for fibre. We've yeah. got uh, a whole processing plant so we can sell clean fibre for... Uh, it goes into mattresses and loft insulation. By the beginning of August, hopefully this will be 10 feet tall. I'm sure I've loads of people are interested. What's the difference between this and marijuana? Well, hemp and marijuana are both cannabis plants, yeah. um, but you've got different varieties that produce different cannabinoids. How legal is this and when does it get to the point where it becomes illegal? We are perfectly legal because we're licensed by the Home Office to produce okay. hemp straw. We're not allowed to harvest the leaf and flower, so we have to leave the leaf and flower in the field. And what do you do with the leaf and flower? Do you just leave it, it goes here? goes to waste. Or? Right, okay. So the bit we're throwing away is the part of the plant that the CBD has been extracted from. It frustrates me somewhat that yeah. the, all the CBD producing companies in the UK are allowed to bring leaf and flower in from abroad, but we can't produce it at home. So if the, uh, the leaves and flowers go to waste, where are all the CBD UK oil coming from? Oh, all the UK produced um, products, it's either coming from Eastern Europe or America. Okay. Oh, didn't realise that. Um, I imagine most people don't. Most people don't. When people hear cannabis, they usually think getting high. And although CBD is cannabis, it doesn't get you high and it's legal. And that's because cannabis is actually the name of a group of plants and both marijuana and hemp belong to that family. Cannabis plants have around 100 different chemicals in them called cannabinoids, and they can have various effects on us. Marijuana plants have been bred to have higher levels of a psychoactive chemical known as THC, whereas hemp plants have higher levels of the chemical CBD, which is not psychoactive and can sometimes have pain-relieving and calming effects. From my research into the CBD oil, I just presumed that it was all made in the UK from... What I've read nowhere states differently. That I've been learnt today that the local homegrown farmers can't even use the bits that make the CBD. It just throws you in a little bit of doubt and confusion once again. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm Elizabeth. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you.
What have you found out in your, your research so far? So it's a really exciting area, I think, um, especially in psychosis, because we don't really have uh, treatments that are eff as effective as we'd hope, and they often come along with lots of very um, unpleasant side effects. Yeah. It seems that CBD is relatively safe and well tolerated. So the study that I worked on looked at um, people who were at risk of developing psychosis and we gave them um, a 600 milligram dose of CBD or a placebo for three weeks. And we found that CBD was able to normalise the dysfunction that you see in certain brain areas involved in psychosis. I haven't tried it, but I've opened it and it stinks. It smells like soil or something. It's hard to say <laughs> what it smells like. So I bought this one offline and it's 2.5 milligrams of CBD per drop. But that's probably not going to be very effective if you're looking at 300 milligrams or 600 milligrams. I think the risk here is that we just don't have the evidence of whether it works or not. Okay. The, the research that we know about is looking at sort of quite high doses, 600 yeah. to 2,000 milligrams, and um, we know that this could have a, a clinical benefit. But this, the things that you can get on the high street, often they have much lower levels, and we just don't know, basically, whether they work or not. I know lots of people report that this is helpful. Um, however, it's difficult to know how much of that is um, sort of because of the drug or because of um, a placebo effect. Yeah. Um, and um, often a placebo effect isn't a bad thing. What would you recommend, what would you advise before purchasing a product online? I think it's important to speak to your doctor if you're considering it, because the other thing that we don't know about CBD is the effects that it might have when you're taking another medication, for example. <laughs>
we ran a series of tests on the product and identified that the THC content within the product was just over four times uh, the legal limit. So the legal limit is uh, one milligram per container and we identified just over four milligrams in this, in this product. Four milligrams of THC isn't going to do anything notable to a person. Um, you'd have to have a, a considerable amount of THC in there for, for there to be a psychoactive response. We found that the CBD content was, was pretty much spot on um, to, to what they'd claimed on the product. When you extract CBD from the hemp plant, you end up with THC as a byproduct. So it could be the extraction process wasn't as thorough as it should have been at separating the cannabinoids properly. It could also be a, a pure misunderstanding of the law. The problem is, unless you know how to interpret it, it's just a page with a load of numbers on it. So I think the, um, there, there needs to be a simpler way of explaining this to, to the consumer uh, that, that doesn't rely on complicated reports like this. I would say to Natalie, don't worry. Um, you know, the, the THC content in there is very, very low. Um, don't fear CBD products as a result of um, this, this experience. And as the industry grows and becomes more mature, um, brands will be explaining better to consumers uh, about their products and making sure that those products comply with all, all regulation. I've learnt so far, I don't think I'm ready to take CBD oil just until a few more studies and tests have been completed. I'd never say no to taking it, especially because it's becoming more prominent in the media and in the research labs, but I'd definitely keep an open mind about taking it.